Hi, my name is Jake Bossenkamper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Look and Grow. And I am joined by who today? Who are you again? Ashley Venhorst, Seed and Seed Treatment Manager here with Liquid Grow. A little bit newer face on here with me. That's great. A little bit, yeah. yes. So Ashley, what have you been here in the countryside? All sorts of things. Good yields, average yields. Uh, but the main question I've been getting is why are we investing in these flagship brands that might be a little bit more expensive versus going for one of the maybe third tier seed brands that might be a little bit cheaper? Mm. If we're having average yields across the board, why are we paying a little more for a bag of seed? Yeah, so I could see the situation where, you know, the farmer, oh, you know, this field averaged 270 or 280 this year in places. Mm -hmm. We had really good yields in places. Absolutely. I could see them saying, well, my non-flagship hybrid did really well. Why would I need to buy something more expensive mm -hmm. whenever this one's doing really well? And I can, I can rationalize with that. What I would say, though, is that I'll give you an example, okay? I'm, I'm when I'm sitting here looking at a starter trial I did in 24, and when you use the Infero starter, you got 306, and that's really good, yes. right? When you didn't use Infero starter, you still got 283, and that's pretty good too. Yes, that's very good. <laughs> so I think it's possible that you had really good yields, but the really good yields in general because of the environment, right? right. And I would argue that some of the flagship brands still may have been better than mm -hmm. than you got you know you walked away with 280 oh, that's pretty good right but i would say it's possible it could have been 306 mm -hmm. or 300. if you don't have those direct side-by-side -side comparisons it's not easy to draw absolute conclusions right that's number one number two i would say that when you're buying some of these flagship brands you've got a line up across the board that should be pretty darn good mm -hmm. And not only do they have high yield potential, they ought to have a lot of agronomic traits that are very defensive in nature. So we don't know what next year is gonna bring. Right. But it would be my expectation, if I was buying a flagship brand, that I'd have pretty reasonable tolerance to Northern Corn Leaf Blight mm -hmm. or um, Rust, for example, okay? Or I'd have pretty good stress tolerance to uh, lack of water. Um, I'd have good root more protection. Um, I think there's a lot of defensive traits that on average a lot of the flagship brands are going to have. You know, sure. that's part of what you should be paying for is, is you know, good stress emergence tolerance, good disease packages, uh, good traits. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the other thing I would say too. So that's, that would be my answer to that question. Sure. So we're paying for the genetics to help with these stressful years that we've seen in the last few years, the drought years, the last couple years, and then this year we had really early water so then it kind of got cold and crusted on us so we're really paying for those genetics on these stress years that we're seeing the other thing i want to point out on that topic is these flagship brands really support us when it comes to ppi claims so any sort of problems that we have and um, any replants so they're really good at supporting us and supporting the farmers showing up at the farm gate when those types of problems arise and that's worth a lot mm -hmm. to, to know you have that assurance in your pocket yes yes especially with tough commodity prices that's true well, it was great to see you, Ashley. Yeah, we should do this more too. often. We should. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Stay in the know with Liquid Grow.